Hello everyone. You're gonna want to stick around to the end of this one. What did he say his name was? Gabatron. Just in case you guys don't know, PTE stands for Public Testing Environment. These PTEs allow developers to assess changes, gather feedback, and squash major bugs before they release their patches and updates. Team 17 just held their first one starting this last Thursday. They extended it through the weekend, but we'll touch on that in a bit. Uh, so this PTE is kind of a big deal as Team 17 abolished the PTE when they took over Hell Let Loose's development. However, after an update that introduced some issues to the game and uh, some pretty negative feedback, Team 17 has come around and reintroduced the PTE to the Hell Let Loose development cycle. Okay, so what were they looking at for this PTE? What was the focus? First, they say they have reverted sprint speed back to the pre-update 14 speed, and they simply got rid of the dive to prone functionality in its entirety. They simply wanted our feedback on how we feel about it, and they want us to compare it to the live version of the game. Second, they say they potentially have found some fixes to both the long-standing grenade and loadout bugs. Normally, you have to agree to a non-disclosure agreement, or NDA, to take part in these. However, since there is nothing new, you know, no new content, Team 17 did not have us agree to an NDA for this one. All the footage you are seeing here is from the 14.2 PTE. Now onto my impressions and experience with the PTE. First, let's talk about the grenade and loadout bugs. I have to say these are things that happen very rarely to me in the first place, uh, but I did not experience any issues, nor did any of the people I was playing with. You guys are going to have to pipe up in the comments and let me know if these bugs, you know, reared their ugly heads for you. After all, you know, I am a pretty small sample size, uh, but let's hope that this is a good sign uh, that these have finally been squashed. On to performance. I was only able to play three full matches and one partial match, one of which I thought I was recording and it turned out I wasn't, which really sucked because uh, it was a good match with a lot of good discussion. But performance seemed okay on all maps I played except Kursk. There were plenty of frame drops and there was noticeable stuttering on this map and it seemed to be across the board. I see we still have a stutter issue here. I was gonna say, does anybody else get like major frame drops? Do you have your shadows on high? I had one earlier. So this is disappointing. Uh, I'm glad it's happening in the PTE, so hopefully something can be done about it. But it was bad, and we need to keep an eye on it. I know Kursk really, you know, isn't a community favorite, uh, but I like it, and I don't want it taken out of the rotation again due to performance issues. New bugs. There seems to have been a new VoIP bug introduced in the PTE, specifically with proximity or local chat. Are you a dog squad? Are you a dog squad? Hello? Can you guys still hear me? Yep. I don't have local chat. Do you guys have local? I had to do the disconnect reconnect thing when the game started. It wasn't working at first. Yep. Ghost remembered he has a satchel. Hello. Hey, hello, I got I got local now. The fix to this in-game was simple enough, you know, just go to audio, disconnect, and reconnect, but it's still a problem. I was definitely not the only one affected. It seemed like most of the players in the server were affected by this at one point in time. I have pretty high confidence that this, you know, specific bug will be sorted out sooner rather than later though, uh, as, you know, the current fix can be tracked. Let's talk a little bit about participation uh, before we get into locomotion. So PTEs work best when the servers are full. This way everything is nice and stressed. The matches I played all had a max of anywhere between 40 to 50 people is all. And this is extremely disappointing considering all the backlash that Team 17 got for getting rid of them in the first place. Some people I was playing with said things like, well, it's because it's on a Thursday. And another one even said, Black Matter never did PTEs on Thursdays. They always did them on weekends. And this is just patently false. Black Matter PTEs were always on Thursdays. Why? Uh, my guess is because they're human beings that like to spend their weekends with their loved ones and relax like everyone else. Uh, so we ask for PTEs, we get PTEs, and then we complain about the PTE. Thing to see what happens if after the PTE they're like, you know what, there wasn't much interest, so we're gonna just leave it as is. Like, 
if everyone was it, like the community has something like some sort of responsibility to be here. Yeah. Uh, the negative feedback is starting to sound, you know, disingenuous. Now, having said that, before you all get mad at me, uh, PTEs on Thursdays have always made it tough for people to participate. So Team 17 granted the community's requests and extended the PTE through the weekend. I personally was not available to participate other than Thursday and Sunday evenings, so you guys will have to let me know how that went. While I think weekend PTEs would be ideal, I would not expect that to be, you know, how they're handled in the future. This PTE probably required less monitoring since it was mostly about feedback, but future PTEs will have more changes that will probably require, you know, more close monitoring. Okay, now onto the stuff that we're really all here for, the locomotion changes. Like stated earlier, uh, Dive to Prone was completely reverse and it really seemed like people missed it. Everyone, and I mean every single person I played with, said they wanted it back. I'm not sure about the Dive to Prone, uh, to Prone uh, yeah, while you're sprinting. Yeah, they took that out for the PTE. Yes, I think it, it deserved uh, an adjustment, not just take it out. Because right. it was interesting, but it was really okay. Yeah, it was too easy to exploit, but I agree it should be in the game in some way. It just needs to be better implemented. Yep. But I really like it. I really like it. Yeah, I agree. Alright, so I gotta say, I, uh, I don't feel like they need to completely take out the dive to prone deal. Agreed. Oh, no, they just need to fix it. Yeah, and it's it's work. Cause it definitely it definitely felt better than like what it is now, where you just kind of stop and lay down. Agreed. Of course, they just don't want it to be able to be abused, and this probably isn't a surprise to anyone. Uh, dive to prone makes a lot of sense in a tactical shooter. It was never a mechanic I used extensively, but I would use it maybe, you know, four to five times every match, and I also missed it. It just needs to be implemented properly with a good amount of testing beforehand. No more dolphin diving, no more changing direction mid-animation. Give us a cooldown or some time limitation between uses. Also, we need to not be able to change direction until the animation has completed. Probably harder to implement than it sounds, but that's just the way it's got to be done. Okay, sprint speed. What we've all been waiting for. Everyone I played with absolutely loved the sprint speed in the PTE. You guys feeling a difference with movement and acceleration or anything? Yes, yes, I was just uh, thinking about it. Now crossing the street is dangerous. I really like it. I think the sprint speed here feels good. I, I think I like this better than the faster speed. No, of course. Yeah, I run so slow, it's great. It does feel a bit better. Man, I know there's going to be a lot of complaining like either way, but I really hope they put it back to this because it just feels a lot better to me. They said it felt natural. It felt good. It was noticeably slower. They felt balance was back in regards to gameplay and vehicles. I thought it felt good too. There was even an instance I had in a match, of course, one of the ones I forgot to record, um, where I was chasing a tiger to put a satchel on it, and it was outrunning me to the point where it became futile. I'd like to hear more from dedicated armor players about their PTE experience, but it seemed that balance has more or less been restored to the vehicle aspect. Now, it was not my plan to test the sprint speed, as frankly, I'm tired of doing that. I am sick to death of talking about sprint speed at this point. But it was requested by a few people, and after all, we should know what's going on, and I do have, you know, all that control footage, so I decided to dive back into it. The 14.2 PTE announcement states, and I quote, In this PTE, the player locomotion speed has been adjusted to reflect the level they were prior to update 14. Seems pretty clear that this adjustment returns things to the slow sprint speed. Now those of you who watched the video at the top right, and you should watch that before finishing this video, will know that my control footage of pre-update 14 sprint speed was a little flawed but it just didn't matter. Whatever speed we had in the PTE was clearly not the pre-update 14 speed.
This left me perplexed for a minute and then I thought, no way! Did Team 17 just leave the same fast sprint speed in the PTE and tell us it was slower just to see how full of shit we are? Um, well, no, they didn't do that either. The speed was definitely slower than the post-update 14 speed. So that left me with one other option. The footage I recorded in November of 2020 before the speed was reduced in update 8. The oldest sprint speed. What some people might call the original sprint speed. And sure enough, it was an identical match. So without a doubt, Team 17 did not revert the sprint speed for the PTE back to pre-update 14, like was stated, but all the way back to pre-update 8. So therein kind of lies the bombshell here. All the players who thought the PTE speed was great because it was reverted were actually enjoying a sprint speed faster than the one they wanted Team 17 to go back to. I have not seen a single complaint about the sprint speed of the PTE in any forum. Now, this does kind of bother me, and I think one of two things happened here. One, it's possible there was just a miscommunication between the devs and the person writing the PTE announcement. That's possible, you know, as we have enough different speeds now for it to get a little confusing. Or, two, they lied in an attempt to get some desired outcome. So part of me is definitely not happy about this. The other part of me thinks that, you know, maybe the community more or less deserved this. Like a big sign with, you guys don't even know what you want, written on it was just slapped across our collective face. I don't like deception, uh, if in fact that is what happened, but I also don't like some of the vitriol and the disingenuous feedback the community responded to Update 14 with. The myth that no one asked for sprint speed increase caught on like wildfire, simply because those individuals never asked for it. A large portion of the community did indeed ask for it. It was pretty regular feedback. Anyone saying otherwise is simply pursuing their own agenda. Did Team 17 increase the speed too much? Absolutely. Did it have an effect on larger gameplay aspects that could have been identified earlier via a PTE? Absolutely. Does that mean that it's the worst thing ever to have some sort of speed increase in Hell Let Loose? Clearly not if this PTE feedback has anything to say about it. Now I will admit that my experience with the PTE is anecdotal. I'm considering my experience with what I was hearing from other players in the PTE along with the lack of negative feedback on the different social platforms. To me it seems the PTE speed was pretty well accepted. We'll have to wait and see what the final verdict is though. Okay, so now on to some final thoughts. I hope they finally fix the grenade and loadout bugs. Uh, I think we don't have enough evidence right now to know for sure if that's the case. Performance seems to continue to be an issue, and we absolutely deserve to have a game that runs smooth on all maps. VoIP continues to have issues. Comms are key in Hell Let Loose and they need to work all the time. Dive to Prone needs to make a return, but it's gotta be done right. And finally, sprint speed cannot be any faster than what it was in the PTE. I think the jury is still out, you know, a little bit on how the armor versus sprint speed balance is here, but this is the absolute fastest people will be willing to go. If you are going to change it, it could, you know, maybe be just a touch slower, but I also think it's time to pick a speed and move on. Enough is enough, and that goes for both Team 17 and the community. And the very last thing I'll say is directed at Team 17. If it's true that you tried to deceive us with the speed in this PTE, then I will truly be disappointed. Uh, first was the initial change with no notice or testing, then was the misrepresentation of the amount of change, as you stated 15%, when it was clearly closer to 25%. And now with this PTE speed being misrepresented. You have made great strides recently in changing course and addressing our concerns. There is so much potential here for both of us. Don't take us for granted as I think we have all learned that just isn't good for either of us. All you have to do is be honest and we will respect that. I'm leaving this video hopeful for the future of Hell Let Loose and hopeful that the relationship between Team 17 and the community can continue to heal and grow. Please leave your feedback in the comments below. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. If we do win, guys, good job. Yep, good game, good. What's up?